so I'll be explaining um, how to make a multicolored brush or like a multicolored stamp brush so you can make your own brush that changes color depending on what color you chose and so on. So uh, first thing to note in Krita, all the brushes have different brush engines. They have um, their own like specific purpose. The most versatile one is the pixel engine. So the pixel engine is kind of like 80% of all the brushes that you use. But sometimes there's also um, what we would call the spray engine and also um, hatching engine. So um, lots of things. We're focused on the difference between these two because we're talking about stamps. If you didn't know, stamps are like these ones. So this is a stamp of a star. This is uh, another stamp. This is another stamp. This is a stamp of some bubbles or bouquet, some grass, and um, it's a really subtle like dust brush. So for this one, the hearts, uh, if we look, we actually look at the brush editor. So the brush editor, you can bring this up. I forgot the hotkey. I, in mine, I set it to F5. I'm not sure if that's the default one, but uh, over here, you can just click over here, right beside like brush preview on the top. And that will bring the brush editor. And you can see here, it's called the spray engine. Now, if we go over to say this one, this brush, it would say the pixel engine. So the key difference is I'm using the pixel engine, right? So I made the brush this large and I painted across this one, made it this large, painted across this one. So you can see as I change the brush, the stamp also changes in size, but here by paint using this heart brush you can see it's stamping at that kind of size and if i made it larger it's actually um spreading it out more so the amount of um hearts that you can see is the same but since i've made the brush larger it's scattered all over that area more even the actual stamp or like the shape that the brush is using doesn't really change and that's like the big difference between these two and um you can also see in the brush editor it has less options so it's much simpler much easier to understand i guess but um for the pixel engine it has way more options way more things to fine tune so if you're in a situation where you want your brush to not change in size but you want the the area covered changed then you would need the spray brush in any other situation i i would see the pixel engine to be um way more versatile and way more efficient in other general situations so let's look into creating our own stamp brush so actually um part of making a new brush is actually choosing a brush to jump off of say here we can already use the stamp, um, this brush, because it already has lots of the features we're looking for. So it scatters, uh, so this is the brush, right? So it scatters this like brush shape um, into different directions and it changes size as well. So some of these are going to be small, some of these are gonna be big. And yeah, that's about it. That's the main thing that I'm looking for in this like specific brush. So we can jump off of that one and just change the brush tip. So you can use the, uh, you can change the brush tip over here and look for a different one. I have installed like lots of custom ones. So um, you don't have to go for the ones that I'm um, looking for here. Maybe this one, for example, I can choose this one. So this is already an interesting brush with um, an interesting texture, but I don't really like how it doesn't change um, angle. So I can change the angle over here in the rotation. Um, you have to check the box first. So you'll have access to these types of options. And the more important one is the fuzzy dab one. You can um, keep it as it is, like this angled line going on a 45 degree angle, or you can do this, which also works. Then just change this to change how drastic the effect would be and now if um, you'll notice 
the brush now changes also in rotation compared to say this one where you can clearly see like there's this kind of square shape for the brush and here it's much more like all over the place so yeah now to make it multicolored let's go back to that brush to make it multicolored you'll have to go to here on the color um, category or like the color section you don't need to change um, plain color or the source uh, mainly you'll be looking for the hue here on the hue section we'll turn that on then um, under the fuzzy dab let's turn off pressure as well because that would mean if i press hard the color will change which i don't really want to happen so i'll turn that off um, fuzzy stroke is every time you put your pen on the tablet whenever your pen hits the tablet uh, it's going to be triggered but in fuzzy dab every time the brush is used or like the brush tip is used is placed on the canvas it's going to be triggered uh what i mean by that is say here on the fuzzy stroke let's use this one so i have red as my color right now and you can see um when I do one stroke, this is all one stroke. I'm not lifting my pen just yet. Then I lift the pen. Then I do another stroke. You see that it's an entirely different color. Now I let go of the pen, do another stroke, entirely different color. So it's a per stroke basis. But for fuzzy dab, it's for every time the brush is pasted on the canvas. So that's the key difference. And um, you'll be mainly um, jumping between these two. Because these two are the most, I'd say, versatile and like the most um, useful out of all of them. Uh, you can also use um, time and distance, which is also kind of useful in their own right. Um, but yeah, fuzzy dab and fuzzy stroke is the main thing that you want to look out for. Now that we have the color changing, we can also change um, the saturation. Changing the settings over here will make it so that um, it's gonna go between this part, like a uh, completely dull gray with no color at all, to being super completely saturated with color. So it's gonna bounce between um, those two points. Um, I wouldn't change this much. I'd say um, I'd use fuzzy dab again. But here, um, I'm gonna put the strength into, say, like this one. So that way it doesn't. Um, it doesn't change the saturation that much. So if I pick a super saturated color, it's going to paste um, around the same saturation point. So if I color drop this one, you can see it's relatively the same as this one, as this one, as this orange. So it's going to stay right around here. But if I make this strength like 100%, um, you can see some of, some of these are like gray like completely um white some of these are kind of just sat desaturated so something like this so yeah it can definitely vary a lot but uh for our purposes i think it's safe to just keep it at over here now um, for the value value is how bright or how dark the color would be for our purposes we can just stick to keeping it um, the same way with saturation where we kind of want to change it but not not all the time so keep it at like maybe 10 percent so what this will do is kind of change how bright and how dark the initial color would be so if i made this 100 percent you'd see like lots of blacks over there because it's jumping from pure black to pure white all over the place and we don't necessarily want that if we want to make flowers so yeah so we'll eventually change the brush tip, but for now, I'll, I'm just explaining the color. So there's that, hue, saturation, and value. Um, so for hue, another thing is you can see here, you can also choose this one, then lift this up to the middle. And what this will do is kind of bounce between the adjacent colors. So here on the color wheel, right? You can see, um, for example, here on the red, um, its adjacent colors would be orange and purple and what we just did with the brush editor is kind of saying that you can only choose between this point and this point so it can either be purple red or orange oh 
we haven't changed the value yet so let's turn that back down and see uh, right now it's jumping from um, kind of this point and this point so let's make it pure red start from there so some of these are kind of orange yellow orange some of these are slightly more purple but if you go to the hue and raise this up this is going to add hue so it's going to go to the right more uh, instead of going to the left if you lower this one it's going to the left more and if you uh, made this higher on the right it's going to the right more on this color wheel so it's going to the yellows more so you can change how it um, affects the color that way using this kind of um, setting or you can just do um, what I also did which is just make this um, from like corner to corner but change the strength just a little bit so that way um, it doesn't change that much so this one is kind of the yellow yellow green kind of orange but if I made this 100% it would make it um, jump from color to color more so that's how you control basically these two things you can either change the strength or manually change the curve to um, control which colors it will pick it up from you can you can go either way doesn't really matter so now let's use a a flower brush or actually you can just make one so when you're making a brush i suggest just using black so i'm um, just make a flower brush like this doesn't have to be super intricate then i'm gonna scale it down that way it doesn't um slow down my computer when i'm using the brush then i'm gonna control click this um layer like the preview layer then i'm gonna add stamp now it's going to detect um what i just selected which is the layer if i didn't do that say if i deselect this just added stamp it will um, select the entire thing so the entire canvas which is like 1080 by 1080 uh 1000 pixel brush would really slow down krita so i don't recommend uh you doing that if you can just make your brushes really small and um select it that way so i'm gonna go back select this one then put the stamp the reason why i recommended you guys to select um black and use black as your color to make the brush is because that's going to um, help Krita decide what part of the brush is visible and not visible. So I'm going to name this flower demo. Flower demo. Save. And right now it's on my drawing brush, which I don't really want. But it has a neat texture on it, which is cool. Also, by the way, if you didn't know this, you can um, reset the brush by clicking over here. And that will reset it to its like original settings. Then... Let's go back to our brush and change the brush tip of this one. And you can also search the brush tip. So I'm going to search flower with this one. So um, there's a there's a big problem right now. And I haven't turned on the rotation. So right now it's rotating um, quite nicely. But now it's not changing color. The problem is I've selected black. So if we pick a relatively bright color, like a yellow, this color. Now it's going to have that um, colorful color dynamics. So there's that. Now we actually have kind of like a flower brush. Just like that. You can use this to any type of artwork which needs a bit of flowers. You can also change, of course, this, the strength of how many colors it would be. Also change the saturation if you choose a more saturated color. Choose a darker color. It would also change its color um using that value so yeah that's how you make your own multicolored brush especially on the flower but we're not done yet we discussed stamps but what if we want say um color dynamics that has this kind of shimmering um prism effect not sure how you not sure if you understand what i'm saying but let's go to the brush since we already have color dynamics on this one we can just turn off rotation and size and scatter so right now it's kind of like this weird brush but if we turn down the spacing on their brush tip go to spacing and lower this down it's kind of like gasoline or oil stuck on um the pavement 
or the asphalt. It's like kind of like a rainbowy look to it. But that's not necessarily what um I want. What I'm looking for is um it changes not on per tip, but it gradually changes color as I move my stroke. So this is where instead of fuzzy dab, we can actually use either distance or time. So let's use distance for now. Test that out. Right now it's kind of like changing color in like four stages and it re it repeats that. I want it to be like slightly slightly longer than four steps. So I'm gonna make this kind of like 500 pixels and there we go. Um, so here, um, this is what I'm looking for, but it has this abrupt change in the middle where from like a cyan, it goes to a purple, which I don't necessarily want. So the problem is like, um, it's going from this purple, right? Then goes into green, then it stops. So you can either let it complete the color wheel or just make the, just make the entire transition longer. So changing the transition would be just changing this color, this um, number over here. And that would make it so that the color changes. So let's turn off repeat. So it would take a longer time to change the color. But also if I just let the uh, strength up to 100% and put this on repeat, um, what that's going to do is kind of indefinitely change the color and it keeps on going and going and going and goes around the color wheel just like that. So it has this kind of weird um, shimmering effect to it. You can also do this for the value, which also has another um, cool effect to it. So instead of fuzzy dab, we're going to choose distance again. Kind of make this 1000 or 600 pixels of this strength or not necessarily, maybe something like this. So now you can see that sometimes it's darker, sometimes it's brighter. If I make this much bigger, there we go. Now it looks kind of like, um, I don't know, it looks sci-fi almost, kind of 3D. So you can definitely create interesting shapes and interesting textures by just changing different settings over here. But yeah, if you want to save this, um, go over here on the top right, save new brush, change the name of this. Also, uh, you can create your own kind of like brush preview. What you can do is load from icon library and here you can select which type of brush you'd like it to be. So maybe I'd like, maybe I'd like this one. Have this icon over here and change the hue, or change the saturation. I'm gonna make it kind of like a cyan, hit okay. Then draw a brush stroke here. Then um, name this color them. So now I have a completely new brush that does this thing, which is kind of cool. Uh, I know Rakuri has this type of brush which is really really cool um i recommend you to download his pack um if you're ever interested in um these types of brushes just mainly wanted to teach you guys how you would create a stamp brush um like this one or create a gradient um color dynamics brush and yeah hope that helped and thanks for watching